Hello and welcome back to the Garner Sewing Room. We are going to show you what comes inside of the bunny pillow kit that you guys can purchase online on my Etsy shop. I'm going to try to put it on Facebook Market and my Facebook page. So inside the kit, you are going to get all the materials you need to make the, to make the bunny um, pillow, except for the polyfill. So you will need to purchase some polyfill or you might have them at home. You get full colored instructions with your kit, giving you detailed directions on what to do with colors. Um, and then these colors here, when it comes, when it referencing a running stitch and so on like that, that's um, actually also on the back of the page. There's a little index that shows you how to do a running stitch, how to do a back stitch, how to do a whip stitch, and how to thread your needle using a needle threader. So you um, get in the kit, you get 10 pins, one needle, one needle threader, you get some sticky tape, you get your embroidery thread, you get your eyes, um, and then you also get pink thread for sewing it together, okay? So on the kit, you also get your four ears, because you get four ears, two per side per ear. And then here, you get your bunny face. Oh, it's upside down. Your bunny face. So this helps you with placement on where you are putting your bunny um, nose, your whiskers, your eyes. So the eyes are felt, the nose is felt. The whiskers you are going to actually do um, an embroidery stitch to make your whiskers, okay? It also shows you the placement for your ears at the top. I hope you guys can see that, see? It gives you your placement for your ears. So once you've actually sewn your ears together and turned them out, it tells you where to place them like this. That's how it looks like when you place it. And then you put your other piece on top. This is the part where confuses most people, but this is how it's done correctly, where the ears are going to go inside. And it says that in the directions. Then you're going to pin everything in place. Put your ears there. Okay. You can pin everything in place or you could use the sticky tape, the double-sided sticky tape. And then on the other side, once you flip it all over, it actually gives you the um, direct, the place where to actually sew and where to leave open. So it literally tells you everything. It gives you your markings on your fabric. Um, it's very easy to follow along and I will be making a video um, I'm actually following up with this video to show you actually how to put everything together But I wanted to show you what came in your kit. So um, We're going to go ahead and put it together and we'll be back Okay, so once you've gone ahead and used the lines to do your um, Whiskers here because it's marked on each of the pieces. I have gone ahead and peeled and stuck on my eyes and my nose according to the diagram. Um, what I did is I pre-marked all of this so it would be easier for you or your child to um, go ahead and place everything where it needs to be so it all looks uniform and things like that, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do a running stitch just along the edges of my eyes and my nose Okay, what, how you do that, just like you did with your embroidery, you're going to pick it up from the bottom, pick it up, come up from the bottom, pull through you so you can't go anymore, and then do your running stitches right through here. So just do that. In and out, in and out, it's the running stitch. Now. If you um, have a smaller child, you could put this on an embroidery hoop if you have an embroidery hoop at home. If you don't, my next best suggestion is to do what's called an, a, the, the in and out running stitch kind of method, which is to come up, and you come up just like that. And then you're gonna go down and then right back up and then down and then right back up again. See that? And then you pull. 
Okay, and then again, down, up, down, up, just like that. So now that is nice and stuck down. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna go to the other side, flip my piece over, and then from the back side, I'm going to tie this off. What that means is I'm going to go ahead and make a knot back here. So I'm gonna go and come into this stitch right here that I have, the closest stitch that I can, run through, and then right before it goes away, take your needle and put it through the loop. And I like to do that two times just so it's good and secure. So that's nice and tied off. And then you're going to cut it. Cut it, and then you're going to do the same thing with your eyes. And I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna show you guys what we're doing next. Okay, so if you have a sewing machine, you can also opt to do this on your sewing machine. I would suggest doing the same colored thread as the felt pieces. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and put my needle down. And you want a pretty large stitch length, so you don't want anything smaller than a three and a half. Okay, and then you're gonna go ahead and go nice and slowly. Here's a, here is um, a tip, so when you're tip turning your machine, is what you're gonna do is you're gonna lift up your presser foot, turn a little bit, and go back down. You can always hand crank your needle if you need to. You don't have to use the, the, the pedal. You can just hand crank it, and then lift and turn. So that's another way of using your sewing machine without having to worry about the speed. Because um, if you don't have speed control, sometimes this could be a little bit of a challenge for younger kids um, with their foot coordination with the speed pedal. And for adults too sometimes. <laughs> sometimes I go a little too fast. Okay, crank it, lift. Come to the where we began and then do a little back stitch. Bring it back up, take it off. And that's what we have there, so it's nice and on right there. We'll do the same process for this eye, and then I'm gonna show you how to do the bunny ears. Okay, so with your kit, you got two bunny ears, um, and it's a set of two pieces of fabric together, and you have two sets. With the pins that was provided, you can go ahead and take it and pin it together. It doesn't have to be a lot, just enough to kind of keep everything together. So I would say about four pins or so. Take it and pin it around. I'm going to show you both ways of doing this with hand stitching as well as on the sewing machine. So you also got those little pieces of sticky back tape that you can use to put on this if you'd like to to hold it together. But here's um, a warning about the sticky back tape. The sticky back tape is not easily sewn through. Um, it will gum up your needle either a hand needle or your sewing machine needle. So wherever you're going to put the sticky tape, I would say put it to the outside of that line because that's the line that we're gonna stitch on. So if you put the sticky tape on this side, then you're not gonna stitch through it. So just so that you know um, where to keep the sticky tape if you use it at all. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get our hand needle, okay? Just like that, and we're gonna do what's called a back stitch. Okay, so the back stitch, looks like this. So we're going to come up from underneath a little bit further from where it starts. Then you're going to go down and then back up. So it's almost like you're going backwards and then forward. Then you're going to go back into your, to where that stitch ended. Go back up and come back forward again. You take that pain out the way. Okay. So you're going to go like that. Backwards and back up. Okay, just like that. And you do this for the entire ear. So if you're new to hand sewing, this might be um, a little bit more time consuming than it would be if you did it with the sewing machine, but it's totally doable either way. So don't feel discouraged, like you have to have a sewing machine. You can do all these kits that I have um, by hand sewing. There we go, just like that. And you continue to go until um, until you're done. Okay, so I just forgot to change my thread out, but you could use the regular thread that was provided 
instead of the embroidery thread. If you've done all of your outlining and all your stitching and you have extra embroidery thread, then you can go ahead and use it. It won't hurt anything. But we also provided you with color coordinated um, thread to color coordinate with your fabric as well that you've chosen. So either one. Just don't use the embroidery thread until after you've done your eyes and your whiskers. I'm gonna go like that. Okay, so now if you're kind of getting close to being almost out of embroidery thread, what you're gonna do is you're gonna tie it off. You're gonna go back in and then back up like this. Before it goes away, put your needle into the loop. The knot happens down there. Pull it through one more time. Pull it through one more time and make a knot. So now your knot's all the way down there. Cut it off and you continue to do that. Rethread your needle and continue to do that all the way around. I'm going to show you how we're doing it on the sewing machine. So in case you have a sewing machine, you can do it this way as well. Okay. Pull your machine closer to you. Okay. Now we're going to follow along those stitch lines as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my needle down, my presser foot down. And I'm actually, I have the capability of moving my, um, of moving my needle over with my machine. If you're not able to do that, then just line it up so that the needle um, goes with this thread, with this dotted line. Okay. When you first get started, you're going to back stitch. You're going to take your pin out, and then you're going to continue to follow that line as closely as possible. You don't have to be perfect, but the closer the better. It's just a suggestion. It's just for easier referencing when it comes to someone who's new at sewing. Where are you sewing? Okay, so at the top here, I'm gonna put my needle down, lift it up, and come back down. That's called a pivot. Go down, and I'm just gonna stitch right back over where I stitched before. And back stitch at the end. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Okay. So um, here, you can trim it back a little bit here in this area if you'd like to. The trimming just has it so it's less bulk when we turn it out. According to the directions at this point, after you finish both ears, you're going to turn it out. So how you do that is you take your thumb and you place it on the inside like this, and then all you're doing is just pushing it through. Kind of like turning out socks. If you're having a hard time pushing the rest of it through, um, there's things called like turning sticks um, that you get when you buy polyfill um, online. When you buy the polyfill at the store, like at Michael's or Joann's and stuff, and you get those small bags that usually comes with um, a stick of poly, polyfill. But if you don't have that, just to help you a little bit, take your scissors, make sure they're not really sharp, they're kind of blunt at the end, and then just slowly push that out just a little bit, you're not jamming it in there. Be careful with that. And there's your ears. See that, that's one ear. And we're gonna repeat the process for the second ear and then I'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now we've got our bunny ears um, done. What we're going to do is take them and I've already stuck them down, but I'm placing them between these two marks that we have here, facing down over the face in between your two markings that you have down covering the face, it's very important. I've gone ahead and peeled, um, I've laid out and I've peeled my tape around the perimeter of my bunny. And I'm going to take the other piece of pink fabric that does not have any markings on it and lay it over my bunny face. Lay it over and just pat it down so it adheres and sticks to the sticky tape. Now. You do not have to use such as, as much sticky tape as I did. I was just showing you for an example. You could just use little pieces of it, like a couple of one inch pieces around, okay? Once you've done that, now we're gonna turn it over, okay? We're gonna turn it over and it's gonna show us our stitch marks. So if you can see on the camera, 
these are our stitch lines, okay? Down here at the bottom, next to the whiskers and the face, you're gonna see that there's no stitches right here. That is on purpose. We are not stitching in here. They're leaving that open so we can turn it out and then we can um, stuff it after we've turned it out. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna do this on the sewing machine or you can do it with your needle and thread that was provided with you in the kit with the hand needle and we're gonna stitch all the way around, okay? And you're gonna use a back stitch if you're using a hand needle. Remember that back stitch that we showed you during the, um, the ear portion? It's the same exact stitch, you're just doing it all the way around. I'm gonna take justice. Perfect. Okay, so we're gonna kind of back stitch at the beginning because we don't want that opening up on us. Going to that corner, needle down, lift up your presser foot, bring the fabric towards you, put your presser foot back down, and then stitch again. Okay, crank it. You, you can use your hand crank this to lift up your presser foot, bring it back down. Now we're going to go over the bunny ears. You may have to um, help it along a little bit over the bunny ears, but most machines should be able to go through this just fine. It's not that thick of a layer. Lift and go again. And just using that as a guide. Again, I did not put any of my sticky tape anywhere near this dotted line because it does get sticky and it will gum up your needle and it's a little it's harder to sew so just to remind you don't put the sticky tape anywhere near where we're actually stitching you know, to this side back stitch okay good lift up your needle take it off snip okay that's what it looks like right there here are our bunny ears here's the opening so now that's just another option um, of using your sticky tape instead of your pins to sew everything down now what you can do is you can cut your corners close to your corners but not through them okay so we've done that. Now we're going to turn this guy out. Put your hand in. I like to usually just grab the top of it and pull it out. Just like that. Tug on your ears a little bit. Make sure everything comes out really nice. Push your corners out. Okay, push those corners out nicely on each corner. Okay, there we go. There's our bunny. We're almost done, guys. Okay, so now we're going to do is stuff it. Okay, so with your kit, at this point, unless you bought the kit with the polyfill um, option, then you, at this point, you would just get your, your own polyfill and fill it in. Um, sometimes even filling it with different things like the little pebbles, like the little round pe pellets. I think they're called pellets. There's that option as well. But if you did purchase the polyfill, here is the polyfill. It comes in a one-gallon bag, and we really stuff it in there. Um, I buy mine like in 20-pound boxes, so it's, I've got plenty to share. All right, so I, what I'm doing is just kind of separating it out a little bit like this, and then I'm going to stuff it in. Take it and stuff it in. Here is my, um, I guess, tip, is push it up towards the pointy parts of the ears first, up into the corners, should I say. And this is for anything that you're making. It's not just for the kits but anything else that you do you pull it push it into the corners first okay look at that i'm not even halfway done with the bag and we're already almost filled up <laughs> that's good okay i'm gonna fill it keep stuffing it 
keep stuffing it. And this makes a good size pillow. I mean, this will go on a little girl's bed or a little boy's bed because you could boys can have bunnies. We have gray. Um, we have gray and white options as well as the pink. And if you don't see it, just ask. Um, we've got lots of stuff here at the studio. So there we go. That's nice and stuffed now. So what we get to do now, I'm gonna take a little bit more and put it over here into that corner. Okay. So look, we have enough for another bunny. I give you enough polyfill so you could probably do two of them. <laughs> okay, so now what I'm gonna do right here is I'm going to take it and I'm gonna stuff it in. So I'm pushing in the raw edge, pushing in the raw edge and just kind of sandwiching it together like that. Now you could use the sticky back tape for this or you could just use a pin and go in and pin through it. You're just taking your time. You may need an adult to help you with this part, but it's okay. Okay, so to just do that and just stick it back in. It just kind of wants to do that a little bit sometimes. So that's what we're doing. We're just sticking it in. I'm trying to get a different angle for you guys to see what I'm doing. Pushing it in like that and then just stuffing it in. See that? And I'm just gonna take it and I'm gonna pin right there. Pin right there. And you could pin this direction as well if you wanted to, like that. So you could pin however you'd like to, just like that. And now we're going to get our hand needle and we're gonna do a whip stitch. So you're going to get the color coordinated um, thread that came in your kit. I'm just pulling one out that I had here next to me. I hadn't haven't finished putting all the kits together just yet, so I wanted to make sure I wasn't taking resources from the other kits that people have purchased. So there we go. Take that, and I'm going to tie a knot at the end. Okay, and here's how I like to start my whip stitch. I like to start my whip stitch by coming into one of the folds and just coming up, putting my knot on the inside, okay? Then I'm gonna come back down over that first. I'm gonna go down through that first one then an up and come down. So I'm up here, I'm coming through here. And when I say a small whip stitch, I'm talking about a little tiny stitches that are close to the edge of the fabric, the edge of the little folds to make sure you guys can see when you get close enough that you could take the pin out then you could just take the pin out okay and continue to whip stitch the bottom closed bless you puppy okay Okay, just like that until you get to the very end. So I'm going to continue doing this and then I'll show you how it looks like when we are done. Okay, so now we're coming to the end here. So I'm going to make a couple more stitches. I did have to rethread. I had to tie it off and make a new, um, how to get some more thread on my needle because I did run out. But it's just like before where you start inside and keep whipping it down through the other side. So I'm coming to the end of my opening. So you guys can see that coming to the end of it. Okay, so once I'm at the very end, I'm going to tie it off like I normally tie it off. I'm going to make a small stitch. And before my stitch goes away, I'm going to take my needle and put it into the loop. And I like to do that twice. Then you're gonna take your needle and I like to put it inside the bunny, pop it out somewhere else in the body and then just cut. And then that is your bunny. There we go. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. Oops, let me show you.
put it back up this way. There we go. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and give us a thumbs up and like. And if you want to purchase this kit or any of the other kits that I have available um, on my Etsy shop or my Facebook page, please do so. Um, it supports us as a small business um, during this time where we are not able to do our regular classes. Um, so please go ahead and share and subscribe and take some pictures and show it with us on our social media at Garner Sewing Room. Um, it's hashtag Garner Sewing Room. And we would love to see what you guys are creating. All right. Thanks and have a great day.